Welcome to Midland, Michigan. This is the home of Dow Corning's largest silicon product manufacturing facility. Here the manufacturing process creates millions of pounds of chlorosilane residuals. It's a small percentage, of course, of the total production, but this waste product is classified as a hazardous material under the Resource Conservation and Recovery Act, or RICRA. Now, while Dow Corning has always maintained the highest standards of EPA compliance in disposing of this waste product, the process has required costly collection, transportation, and incineration. So what you see behind me here is the nation's first Inintec Plasma Enhanced Melter, or PEM, sited at a U.S. chemical facility. Now, at chemical manufacturing sites such as this one, the PEM recycles waste, even hazardous waste, into valuable process chemicals that can be used by the host company. The PEM also creates ultra-clean synthesis gas that can be used as a substitute for natural gas or converted into any number of valuable chemicals and transportation fuels. We've tried it on uh, a wide variety of industrial materials, but here specifically at the Midland PEM, the chlorosilane residuals are fed to the PEM where the molecules are instantly broken down into their elemental atoms. The organic materials are reformed by steam reformation into synthesis gas, and that synthesis gas is used later as a fuel to produce steam for the plant. The chlorine from the chlorosilane residuals is removed from the synthesis gas stream and is returned to Dow Corning as ultra-pure aqueous hydrochloric acid a valuable process chemical used at the manufacturing site in which Dow Corning would otherwise have to buy as a raw material. So let's go inside and see how it works. So here we are inside the PEM building and what you can see behind me is the whole of the PEM facility. What we're going to do after this is we're going to go up and we'll actually show you where the, uh, where the feed comes in at the top of the plant and we'll walk you through the process. Now we're standing up at the top of our plant where the uh, feed lines, the chlorosilane, is fed into our, into our facility from the Dow Corning production area. So right behind me here, you see these, uh, these lines with the pink valves in them. These are the uh, feed lines for the chlorosilanes into our facility. And after this, we'll go inside and we'll show how it flows through our process. What we're looking at here behind me is the top of the PEM vessel itself. And so what you can see here is that these feed lines which are coming into the plant they're no larger than a water line or a gas line in your own house. Through any one of those lines, we can actually feed to the facility up to one ton per hour of the chlorosilane feed. They come in here and then they mix with the glass additives, which help the uh, material form a glass in the PEM vessel, and then that, that mixture is fed down into the top of the PEM vessel. We've now come down one level. We're now at the, at the level where the main body of the PEM vessel itself is. So in this vessel, what's happening is the, the material is coming in through the top of the vessel. It's dropping onto the surface of the molten glass. There you have those graphite electrodes are, are forming the plasma above the surface of the molten glass. That's where the material is reacting with the steam that's being fed in, and that's where it's actually being gasified. The, uh, the chlorine is being liberated as hydrogen chloride, or HCl gas, and the organic material is actually being formed into synthesis gas through the reaction with the steam in this vessel. So now what you can see behind me here is this large horizontal duct where the synthesis gas leaves the PEM and comes over into the thermal resonance chamber or TRC. What we'll do next is we'll move up one level and we'll be able to trace the flow of the process from the TRC through the gas cooler up through the uh, dust filter and into the unit where we produce the high purity uh, hydrochloric acid. Okay, so what then happens is the, uh, the hot synthesis gas comes out of the PEM and it comes into the TRC, the thermal resonance chamber. That's just a hot chamber where the gas is able to finish its reaction at roughly the same temperature as it is inside the PEM outside of the plasma zone. So it moves up through the TRC and then it moves into the gas cooler. The next vessel you see, it moves down through that gas cooler and then it moves into the bottom of this dust filter and moves up through that dust filter. The dust filter takes out all remaining impurities, which would be the solid impurities, the dust, that could be carried along. After that, we can then move into the high purity HCl extraction. So then what happens is, coming out of the top of the dust filter is cool, dust-free gas, which contains the hydrochloric acid gas, and the, and the high purity synthesis gas. So the next step is directly behind me is this extraction reactor where the uh, hydrochloric acid is pulled out of the gas 
and has turned into this ultra-pure hydrochloric acid, which is shipped back to Dow Corning as a raw material that they otherwise would have to buy. This is very high purity hydrochloric acid. It's actually a commercial quality suitable for uh, production of electronic materials. What's left over after that is just the synthesis gas. Cool, dust free, and acid free, which goes on downstream, and it's used to produce high pressure steam, which goes back also to Dow Corning. So it's interesting to note that a uh, that the amount of hydrochloric acid that we can produce at this facility and the amount of steam that we can produce at this facility each represent about 10% of Dow Corning's requirements at this facility, which means that there's a real economic benefit to our being able to produce hydrochloric acid and steam from these materials that we receive here. Now, synthesis gas has many applications. It can be used to produce a variety of different products. You can use synthesis gas to produce hydrogen, methanol, ethanol, even diesel. But it also is an extremely clean burning fuel that can be used as a direct substitute for our natural gas. And at this plant, that's what it's used for. So now we're standing actually underneath the PEM. We've talked about all of what happens with the gas moving through the gasification reactor, but what about the glass? Well, here directly behind me and above my head is the drain where the molten glass comes out of the bottom of the PEM. We're constantly adding to the glass pool in the PEM. And so more glass is being formed, so we need to drain that off. So this is where it comes out as molten glass and falls into the cooler, where it freezes, solidifies, and is broken up into gravelly chunks. It's a, it's a glass material. It's totally non-leachable. And in fact, at one of our other facilities, we've already found a commercial use for it. It can be used as a substitute for riprap uh, around the drainage lines in the leachate ponds at, the, at that facility. So with uh, Inintech PEM technology, chemical processing facilities can significantly lower their carbon footprints while transforming what was once useless waste and a liability into valuable feedstock for chemical products and clean fuels.